All right, everyone, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing. It's today I want to talk about Restless Leg Syndrome. But before we get started, show us a little love. Like our video. Show us a little more love. Subscribe to our channel. And to benefit you, hit that notification button. So every week when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. Now, a lot of people have restless leg. We work with tons of people with restless leg. And I think a lot of times it's misdiagnosed people with true restless leg. I mean, they lay on the table and their legs just jump involuntarily, right? A lot of the time, just basic principle, people that have, let's say, restless leg or twitchy legs during the day is potassium deficiency. People that have that at night is magnesium deficiency. Now, here's the thing. Everything comes back to the cell level. Everything, every disease, every disorder, everything. And the question is, is the cell producing exhaust, which is inflammation, calcification? right? Forest fire. Or is it producing energy? When we're producing energy, we're producing antioxidants. When we're producing antioxidants, we're creating a nice healing environment. We're increasing our vitality. We're able to build resiliency and metabolic reserve. That's where we want to be, right? That's why biohacking is so popular. That's why breath work is so popular. That's why cold therapy is so popular because it increases mitochondrial biogenesis, which is that kind of keeps the feedback loop going. The more mitochondria you have, the more energy produced. The problem is, are we able to do that in our life every day without these modalities? If we took them away, would energy depletion or energy production stop? And most likely, yes. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to restless leg syndrome, yes, magnesium plays a role and stress plays a role because stress in itself will do a few things. Number one, it's gonna cause magnesium loss. That's simple. Magnesium loss will cause electrolyte confusion at the cell level between magnesium, potassium, sodium. That electrolyte confusion causes inflammation. Inflammation causes cell calcification and calcification leads to cell death. We don't want to go down that path of, let's say, inflammation in a sense. Secondly, when we're chronically stressed, that excess production of ACTH has been shown to lower bioavailable copper production in the liver because that's where copper is loaded into a protein ceruloplasm to be used to activate oxygen to produce energy at the cell level. And without it, we can't produce energy. So stress has a negative effect on copper metabolism. And second, excess cortisol has been shown to, and when it's chronic, to increase a protein in the liver called metallothionine, which binds copper out of the liver and shoots it out of your body. And that's a problem because if we don't have copper, we can't load it into ceruloplasm, we can't activate oxygen, we can't produce energy, now we're producing exhaust, right? So we're getting mineral loss. We're getting sodium loss, potassium loss, magnesium loss, and of course, copper and ceruloplasm, let's call it metabolism dysfunction, right? Now, think of restless leg as Parkinson's of the legs. That's a simple way to understand it. And a lot of people think it's just a mineral issue. And it is, but really what exacerbates it, because a lot of people replenish and they're still not getting there, right? But what exacerbates it, exacerbates it is unbound iron in the myoglobin, right? How do we get that unbound iron? That's inflammation, right? Iron has an inverse relationship with copper. Anytime iron goes up, copper goes down. Right? And you can look this up on the web because there's a huge correlation between anemia and restless leg syndrome. But what we know is this. Copper, or we should say ceruloplasmin, right? Copper is loaded with retinol into ceruloplasmin, activates oxygen, and we produce energy. Okay? That will keep iron recycling going. Why? Because ceruloplasmin regulates the RES, iron recycling system. What that means is we can recycle iron kind of in the warehouses, in the hepatocytes of the liver, the enterocytes of the gut, red blood cells. We can, re we can, you know, kind of get the iron through the cells and into the blood so it can be recycled 24 milligrams a day. It's like a warehouse. If we're, you know, we have, we have boxes coming down the um, conveyor belt and they have to be loaded to the truck. If you don't get the truck into the streets, which is the blood, it's going to back up in the tissues. So going back to what I said originally, stress, depleting minerals, causing and pushing us towards inflammation and calcification and cell death. And secondly, we lose copper in ceruloplasm in the liver because of excess cortisol metallothionine and ACs TH is effect on ceruloplasm. So if we don't have copper, we can't cycle, we can't recycle um, iron through the peroxidase and ferroportin doorways. So Iron can't get out of the cells in a sense and into the blood and be recycled, 
what happens? Backs up in the tissues, right? So it's this backing up, the saturation, this unbound iron that's not being recycled that's in the mild lobe and that's causing restless leg that continues that production of inflammation, can you, continues that production of oxidation, continues that production of calcification and cell death, exhaust, and it keeps getting worse. A little fire turns into a big 500,000 acre forest fire. That is the reason people have restless leg and why most people just take magnesium and it doesn't do anything. You have to get the cells to produce energy. Taking magnesium is important. Yes, energy production requires ATP to be utilized. The problem is if you still have a fire and you're going at it this way with just minerals, it's like trying to put out a forest fire with a fire extinguisher. So what do you do? Well, first you wanna stop anything that interferes with iron metabolism, that affect, so I should say iron metabolism or copper metabolism, right? And that would be things like iron supplements, calcium supplements, zinc supplements, Vitamin D supplements as a deplete liver retinol, and you need retinol to low copper into ceruloplasmin. Prenatals, multivitamins, all these different supplements. Of course, you want to get away from GMO foods because glyphosate chelates copper a million times over. Secondly, you want to follow our work, our TN approach, and you can get some downloads for free, as well as a 10-hour Friday reset every other Friday. You know, you can opt into that. It's in the description. You have to create a nutritional foundation. Once you get rid of some of the blocking factors, the GMO fruits, the high fructose corn syrup, the supplements, and even some medications have iron oxide in them. Once you get rid of the blocking factors, now you can start building up the system. Now you can start building up the system with mineral rich and nutrient dense foods to support iron metabolism, right? To get the conveyor belts going and get those trucks into the blood so we can start recycling iron efficiently. Third, you can start using the adrenal cocktail, right? We have a YouTube on this. That is basically orange juice, um, coconut water, and salt. So we can start replenishing sodium. We can start replenishing potassium in the cell. And then lastly, to support that, you can start using magnesium lotion on your ankles, your legs, et cetera, at night. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Remove, replenish with food, then start adding the adrenal cocktail when the food foundation is there. So you don't get too much sugar. We're replenishing with minerals and then you can add the magnesium lotion. And now what happens is we don't have electrolyte confusion. We're supporting the cell, we're supporting energy production and we're reducing stress and we're reducing all that inflammation and calcification. For more information on our coaching and our group coaching and our balance in the body budget guide, check the description. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out.